भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय We're reading Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 9, text number 18 and 19. Gatir Bharta Prabhu Shakshi Nivasha Sharanam Surat Prabhava Pralaya Stanam Nidanam bijam avyayam, Nidanam bijam avyayam, Tapami aham maham varsham, Tapami aham maham varsham, Nigrinami utrijami cha, Nigrinami utrijami cha, Amritam chaibam richascha, Amritam chaibam richascha, Sad asaj chaham arjuna, Gatir Bharta Prabhu Shakshi, Nevasa Sharanam Surat, Prabhava Pralayastanam, Nidanam Bijam Avyayam, Tapami Aham Aham Varsham, Nigrinami Utrijami Cha, Amritam Chaibam Riches Cha, Sadasas Chaham Arjuna, Gatir Bharta Prabhu Shakshi, Nevasa Saranam Surat, Prabhava Pralayastanam, Nidanam Bijam Avyayam, Tapami Aham Aham Varsham, Nigrinami Utrijami Cha, Amritam Chaivam Riches Cha, Sadashat Chaham Arjuna, Others can chant. Gatibata Prabhu Shakti, 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 Gatibata Prabhu
Translation, I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge and the most dear friend. I am the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything, the resting place and the eternal seat. Do I read the purport, Sudhiri? I should read the purport, right? Purport by Śrīla Prabhupāda. Gati means the destination where we want to go. But the ultimate goal is Krishna, although people do not know it. One who does not know Krishna is misled and his so-called progressive march either partial or illusory. There are so many who make 
There are so many who make as their destination different demigods and by and by rigid performance of the strict pers of the strict respective methods they reach the different planets known as Chandra Loka, Surya Loka, Indra Loka, Maha Loka, etc. But all such lokas or planets being creations of Krishna are simultaneously Krishna and not Krishna. Such planets being manifestations of Krishna's energy are also Krishna, but actually they serve only as a step forward for realization of Krishna. To approach the different energies of Krishna is to approach Krishna indirectly. One should directly approach Krishna. In that way we will save time and energy. For example, if there is a possibility of going to the top of a building by the help of an elevator, why should one go up the staircase step by step? Everything is resting on Krishna's energy. Therefore, without Krishna's shelter, nothing can exist. Krishna is the supreme ruler because everything belongs to him and everything exists on his energy. Krishna being situated in everyone's heart is the supreme witness. The residences, the, 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 re, the residences, countries or planets on which we live are also Krishna. Krishna is the ultimate goal or shelter and therefore we should take shelter of Krishna either for protection or for annihilation of his distress. And whenever we have to take protection we should know that our protection must be a living force. Krishna is the supreme living entity and since Krishna is the source of our generation or the supreme father, no one can be a better friend than Krishna, nor can anyone be a better well-wisher then Krish Krishna is the original source of creation and the ultimate rest after annihilation. Krishna is therefore the eternal cause of all causes. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chaksurun Milihanye Nath As my Shri Gurave Namah Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Gara Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha, Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Satevam Sadvayatam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namustate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi 
प्रणामामि हरि प्रिये कृपा सिंधु पति भवानीभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीहतवैताधार श्रीवासदे घोर बतवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे वी रीडिंग फ्रॉम द नाइन्थ चैप्टर द मोस्ट कॉन्फिडेंशियल नॉलेज लॉर्ड कृष्णा इज डिस्क्राइबिंग हिज एनर्जीज एंड हिज ऑप्यूलेंसी Of course we'll hear more about these things in the next chapter also chapter 10 is vibhuti yoga but here in the ninth chapter lord krishna is also mentioning the nature of his wonderful qualities and energies he is describing many of his different aspects by which we should remember him and we should become more conscious of him for example he says i am the goal i am the goal and prabhupada talks about how people have many different goals some people think the goal is to go to the heavenly planets they think the goal is economic development or they think the goal is to have a long life they do not understand what is actually the real goal of life right there are there there are two words one is shreyas and the other is priyas i remember i was i used to live in calcutta and there was a sari shop there in calcutta it was called shreyas yeah? Shreyas means what is ultimately beneficial, what is eternally beneficial to us, and prayas is what is beneficial immediately at this time. It's but it's temporary. Prayas means material, but shreyas indicates more the spiritual aspect. So Lord Krishna says I am the goal. Right? We want to understand our goal is to go to Krishna, not just to go to the higher planets. Now on the higher planets there may be a long life. Certainly the demigods they live a long time. In the Bhagavad Gita Lord Krishna describes uh, for example the life of Brahma that one day brahma this is sahasra yuga paryantam aharyat brahmano vidu that a thousand ages taken together is the duration of one day of lord brahma so you could understand 1000 ages means 1000 cycles of the four ages satya yuga Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, and Kali Yuga. Right. So Kali Yuga is 432,000 years. Right. We're in Kali Yuga now. We just began 5,000 years ago with the appearance of Lord Krishna, just prior to the beginning of the Kali Yuga. So Kali Yuga. and then dwapara yuga dwapara yuga is twice that and treta treta yuga is three times that and satya yuga four times that so four times plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 so if you multiply the duration of kali yuga by 10 you get one age right so it means 4,320,000 years that's one age and there are 1000 ages in one day of brahma 
And so you can understand how long one day of Brahma is. And similarly on the higher planets, the planets of the Devas, there's a much longer life. The, w w one moment of time there is a very, it, it, it's a very long time here on this planet. It's described, for example, Lord Balaram, uh, he has one wife named Revati. So it's described how he got this wife, Revati, described in Srimad Bhagavatam. In, the, in a, another yuga, long before the Treta yuga, uh, long before Dwapara yuga, in Treta yuga, there was a king called Revata, and he had a daughter named Revati. So he wanted to get a husband for his daughter. So he took his daughter with him and they went to see Lord Brahma. They went all the way up to Brahma Loka. You know, we were just talking, one day of Brahma, it's a thousand ages. So they went to see Lord Brahma, but when they got there, they were told that Lord Brahma is attending a musical concert just now. You have to wait till the concert's finished and then he will meet you. So the king waited with the daughter and after some time then Lord Brahma came and, uh, and he asked them, yes, what do you want, what I can do for you? And Maharaj Revata, he said to Lord Brahma, he said, you know, I was wondering which of these kings would be suitable husband for my daughter. And he mentioned the names of many different kings. And Lord Brahma looked at him and laughed. He said, those kings, they all died long ago. And, and Maharaj Srivata was surprised. He said, no, I, I was just there with them. They were up there, all right, they're young. And Lord Brahma said, no, but you've come here to Brahma Loka and you waited here for me. And while you're waiting, Many years on earth and past, they come and gone, and all those kings whose names you mentioned, they all died, they've all gone. So that is the nature of the material world. Anyway, Lord Brahma was compassionate on the king, and he told him, he said, you go back to earth. Lord Balaram is appearing there. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he will make a good husband for your daughter. So they came back to her and they found Lord Balaram and they approached Lord Balaram. The king requested him, this is my daughter. Lord Brahma said, you would make a good husband for my daughter. But there was a problem. Problem was, she, they were from the previous age, so she was much taller than Lord Balaram. So what to do? Well, Lord Balaram, he is also known as Haladara, the carrier of the plough. So he took his plough and brought her down to size. <laughs> he made her a suitable size to be his wife. So in this way, Lord Balaram took Revati for his wife. So, we should understand that what is the goal? What do we want actually? We should not want any temporary thing. Foolish people will worship the demigods, the devas. They will worship other gods in the Supreme Lord. And they will get the results which are limited, and temporary. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna said, Antavat tu palam tesham tad bhavati alpa medasham. Alpa medasham. Alpa means very small, very meager. Medasham, intelligence. Their brain, their intelligence, very poor. And that's why they're worshipping gods who are giving results which are limited and temporary. Right? Why should we want something which is limited and temporary? We should want the best thing. We should want the eternal benefit. 
why would we be concerned with just some temporary thing? It's not going to solve the problem. Again the problems will come, again there will be problems. We want the solution to the problems. Just like sometimes people will treat the symptoms rather than the disease. We have to recognize if you just treat the symptoms, that will not give the real cure to the problem. We have to recognize what is the disease. And if we just simply think, oh, the symptom, oh, the symptom is, you know, I, I have economic problems, I pray to God to solve my economic problems. And then oh, I have a health problem, I pray to God to solve my health problems. Oh, and I have my job problem, pray to God to solve that problem. You know, the, the, these are all different symptoms. What is the actual disease? The disease is we're here in this material world. We're in the wrong place. We're in a place where everything is temporary and limited. And the nature of this world is described in Bhagavad Gita. Dukhalayam asashvatam. It's, it's misery. Abrahma-bhuvanaloka punaravartano arjuna From the highest planet in the material world, the planet of Lord Brahma, Satyaloka, all the way down through all the different levels, there are 14 different levels of planets within the universe. They're all places of birth and death. There's no eternal life in any of these places. So we should understand the nature of life in this world. That there's going to be problems. It's the nature of this world. It's a problematic place. And this, these problems are given to us to remind us that this is not our real home. We don't belong here. Lord Krishna, you could say, why did Lord Krishna create this world? Well, he creates this world for us so that we can try to satisfy our material desires. That we desire to dominate and to ex enjoy the material world independently of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna said, all right, you go ahead, go, go in, into the material world, into this place, like this planet, it's called Mrityuloka, the planet of death. And go there, go and live there, but how long you can live there? You're going to take birth, and in course of time we have to give up the body and again take birth again. And in this way, in this way we go through the wheel of samsara, the wheel of birth and death, through all the different species of life. So in people who have small brain, alpamerisa, they will simply look for the temporary solutions. They will deal with the symptoms. Oh, let me get some money. Oh, let me get cured. Oh, let me get good job. It's all temporary. It will all be finished with the body. Those people who have a broader intelligence, however, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is described that people who have broader intelligence, they will worship the Supreme Lord by chanting His holy name. It is stated, Krishna Varnam Tivish Akrishnam Sangha Pangrishtra Parshadam Yagnaye Sankirtan Praye Yajantihi Sumedasaha 
medesa again, intelligence, but not alpa medesa, but su medesa. Su medesa meaning purified intelligence, who have a good brain. They will use their intelligence for the worship of the Supreme Lord by chanting His holy name, right? Krishna Varna, Tavish A Krishna, Sangopangrishta, Yagnaye Sankirtan Praye. In the Kali Yuga, there's only one yagna, there's only one sacrifice which we can do. And that sacrifice is the chanting of the holy names. All other yagnas are useless in the Kali Yuga. The only yagna which has any effect in this Kali Yuga is Harinam Sankirtanam. And the Harinam means Krishna Nam, the names of Krishna. We should chant the names of the Supreme Lord and get the ultimate benefit. So, Lord Krishna is speaking here uh, that we should know Him, that He is the goal, He is the... He's the master, He's the witness, He's the abode. And He's also described as being the best friend. We forget who our real friends are. You know, we come together in this world and in the course of our life we have many friends. They come and go. When we were children we had our friends who we played with and then we grow up and we go to school and you get different friends. And then you go to college and again it's different friends. And then you get married, and it's different friends, right? It's the, they come and go. But there's one friend who's always with us, and that is the Lord who's in the heart. And He's accompanying us. He is our real well-wishing friend. Because as a friend, He's speaking to us. And he's telling us things. He's telling us what to do. He's telling us what not to do. We have to pay attention to him, to hear from him carefully. Often people, they don't take attention, they don't pay attention, they don't hear. Krishna is speaking to us, but we're not hearing, we're not paying attention. Just like there's a, there's a story it tells, there was this one man, so he had a talk with God and he told him, he said, you know, when I'm supposed to die, I will go with you, but you have to tell me beforehand. You have to let me know beforehand. So God said, all right, no problem, I'll let you know. And so it happened in course of time, the man died and he was upset and he said to the Lord, he said, you said you would tell me that I was going before I die. You, you, told, you said you were supposed to let me know. But the Lord said to him, no, look, I told you, look at you. Look at your hair, it's all grey, and your skin is all wrinkled. How could you not know that your life was coming to an end? I was telling you by these signs. Often we don't hear, we try to hide the truth, and we try to prolong our life here in this temporary existence. We read in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam about a great king called Maharaj Parikshit and he was cursed to die in seven days. So he immediately prepared himself. He gave up the royal throne 
he gave up his royal robes and he went to a holy place to look for the association of saintly people who could guide him in the goal of life. And he was blessed that the Lord sent Sukadeva Goswami, the liberated son of Srila Vyasadeva, to enlighten him with spiritual knowledge. So Maharaj Parikshit, he was given warning seven days, and in seven days he prepared himself fully to go back to Godhead. We're given another example. The example is given in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. Sukadeva Goswami describes about one king called Kadvanga Maharaj. Kadvanga Maharaj was fighting on behalf of the demigods. The demigods often have to fight against the demons. The demons come with their army and they try to conquer the heaven. So it happened that the demigods needed somebody to fight for them and they enlisted Maharaj Kadvanga. And he came and he fought for them. The, deva, the devas were very pleased with him that he fought so well. Then after some time, Kartikeya came, or Murga as you say here, right? Lord Murga came. And of course he's also a great general. So the demigods then told Kadvanga Maharaj that you can stop now, that Lord Murga is here and he will take over your position. And the demigods said, we want to reward you for all your service because you did so much to help us. So th they asked him, what can we give you? What blessing do you want? So Maharaj Gadvanga said to the devas, he said, just tell me, how long do I have left in this world? And the devas told him, you have only a moment of time left. So Kadvanga Maharaj immediately left the heavenly abode and came down to this earthly abode. And he fixed his mind on the lotus feet of the Lord and he gave up his life and went back to the heavenly went back to the abode of the Lord. He came back to the earth because this is a better place to leave the world. If we leave the world on this earthly planet, we can achieve the supreme destination. We can go back to Godhead. And it is said, even the demigods in heaven, they all want to take their birth on this planet during the Kali Yuga. Because this is the best time to get out from this world. But simply by chanting the holy names of the Lord, one can achieve all perfection. It is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, Kaler dosha nide rajan astihi eko mahatguna kirtana deva krishnasya mukta sangha parambrajit That the age of Kali is an ocean of fall. Kalir dosha nidiraja, an ocean of faults, so many things wrong in this Kali Yuga. Quarreling everywhere, arguing, fighting, people are lazy, dirty, misguided, unlucky, and we have a short life also. Kali Yuga, short life. But there's one good thing about the age of Kali. Just simply by kirtan. Kirta, kirtanat eva krishnasya mukta sangapara. Simply by chanting the names of Lord Krishna, one can get, one can get all success. One can be liberated from the material world. This is the power of the holy name of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is so kind that he comes in the Kali Yuga in the form of His holy name, to bless all of us. But we're so lazy and so unfortunate, we don't take care 
we don't make time to chant the holy name. So Lord Krishna is encouraging all of us by speaking in this way. All right, we're hearing about the energies of Lord Krishna. I'll read the next verse, it's very nice. Translation, O Arjuna, I give heat and withhold the, and withhold the rain and send, oh, oh I, I give, I give heat and withhold and send forth the rain. I am immortality and I am, and I am also death personified. Both spirit and matter are in me, purport. Krishna by his different energies diffuses heat and light throughout the, oh, through the agency of electricity and the sun. During the summer, during the summer season, it is Krishna who checks rain from falling from the sky. And then during the rainy season, he gives unceasing torrents of rain. The energy which sustains us by prolonging the duration of our life is Krishna and energies of Krishna. One can ascertain that for Krishna there is no distinction between matter and spirit. Or in other words, he is both matter and spirit. In the advanced stage of Krishna consciousness, one therefore <coughs> One therefore makes no distinction between matter and spirit. He sees only Krishna in everything. Since Krishna is both matter and spirit, the gigantic universal form comprising all material manifestations is also Krishna. And his pastimes in Vrindavan as two-handed Shamsundar playing the flute are those of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Krishna is describing his absolute nature, that he is both matter and also spirit. He is, he is morality. But he is also immorality. For Krishna there is no distinction because the Lord Krishna, if you read the Ishopanishad, it is described there how the Lord is both antiseptic and prophylactic. Antiseptic means he can purify contaminated place and prophylactic means Sin cannot touch him. So even though he may do something which appears to be immoral, it's not wrong for him because he is the absolute truth. Matter and spirit are the same for him. Just like for the pure devotee, they do not see any distinction between the material and the spiritual. They see Krishna in everything and in everyone. The topmost devotee, the Uttama Adhikari, will see everyone is engaged in the service of Krishna. He does not make distinction. On the lower level, you have Kanista Adhikari. Kanista devotee, a junior devotee, they only see God in the temple. They only see God in the deity and they don't recognize how the Lord is in the heart of everyone. 
They're thinking God is only in the temple. Of course, He is in the temple, but He's not only in the temple. He's in the hearts of everyone, of every living entity. I had the experience with Srila Prabhupada one time, we went to a temple in London. And it was a temple where they were worshipping Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. They were worshipping the Trinity, the three gods. So Srila Prabhupada said to the people there that a devotee of Krishna not only offers respects to Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, but they will offer their respects even to a tiny insect like an ant because they will see Lord Krishna within the heart of the insect. This is Krishna consciousness, seeing the Lord in everyone, in everything. So the Kanista, he only sees God in the temple. But the Madhyama devotee, who is intermediate, he can see God in the deity, and he will make friends with the devotees. He will give mercy to the innocent people and he will avoid those who are atheistic and blasphemous. In other words, the Madhyama devotee will make distinction about who to preach to and who not to preach to. Some people are receptive they like to hear. Just like all of you here this evening, I can understand you're receptive people. You're hearing very carefully. But you get other people who are not interested. They will simply argue and criticize and blaspheme. So we don't try to preach to such people because if we do, they just become more offensive. They just become more inimical and show more anger and hatred for the Lord. So we don't want to encourage that. So we, we just avoid them. At the same time, we will respect them, but we won't try to preach to them. So the Madhyama, the intermediate devotee, makes a distinction between different people. But on the topmost level, like it's being described here in this purple Uttama devotee, he doesn't make any distinction between matter and spirit. He sees it all as Krishna's energy. Just like for Lord Krishna, there's no difference between matter and spirit because it's all his energy. It's coming from him. We're thinking material because we're thinking it's something separate from Krishna. But actually everything is Krishna's. And those who have come to the topmost level, they will see everything in relation to Krishna. And they will utilize everything in the service of Krishna. There are different kinds of renunciation. You get the renunciation by those who are impersonalists. They will want to go away from the world and give up the world as material. But the devotee, those who are Vaishnavas, who are practicing Sanatana Dharma, or the principles of eternal religion, they will not give up the material world, but rather they will use the material world in the service of Lord Krishna. This is actual renunciation, as it is described by great devotees, followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, namely Rupa Goswami, he has taught us Nirbandha Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Uchate. So there is Yukta Vairagya. 
That means renunciation in relation to Krishna. And that renunciation is to utilize everything in the service of Krishna. Just like we're utilizing the microphone here. The microphone is being used in the service of Krishna. And we're utilizing these premises here today. These premises are becoming our center for our meeting, for our program here every Sunday. So this center, this place is becoming spiritual. This microphone is spiritual because it's being used in the service of the Supreme Lord. We have to understand that all energies belong to Krishna. And it is actually wrong to want to give up the things of the material world. Just like there was one famous man in India and he had a picture taken of him. He was supposed to be a, a saintly person. And there was money on the table. And he, the picture showed him like this, that he didn't want to touch the money. But actually he had a lot of money. The money was under the table, you see. He had money on the table he didn't want to touch. But below the table had a lot of money. But he was making a show for common people. People thought, oh, here's a real holy man. He won't touch money. However, Srila Prabhupada told us, he said, you can take a picture of me counting the money. And he said, I will spend it all for Krishna. So that is the genuine holy man. That they will not spend one far one cent for their own sense gratification, but they will send, spend everything for the service of Lord Krishna. So we have to understand this principle of renunciation. We want to utilize everything in the service of Krishna. We don't reject the material world but we use it for the service of Krishna. This is pleasing to Krishna. Krishna is pleased when, we, when he sees us utilize everything for his service. Just like we had a Rathi Atra festival yesterday in Brickfields. We were utilizing the chariot, which you had came from Klein, right? It was Klein's chariot. So your chariot came to break fields and we were able to perform the Rafi Antra festival. And so that's utilizing the things for the service of Krishna. We utilize the, 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 the downtown area there, Little India, brick fields. By going through there, we were propagating Krishna consciousness, giving the Sankirtan movement the chanting of the holy names. We utilize the public for the service of Krishna. Many people came and joined in the chanting. Even some people were strangers to Krishna consciousness, but they were attracted by the chanting and dancing, and they came forward and also wanted to participate. And many people also were given prasadam. They were able to eat the sanctified foodstuffs offered to the Lord. So this is how we utilize everything in the service of Lord Krishna. Or if you could say Lord Jagannath. Of course, the Lord has many forms. Just as on our altar here, we see the Lord appearing in different forms. He's appearing as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with Lord Nityananda. That is their most merciful form. And they're engaging in chanting and dancing, the Sankirtan movement. But then we have the divine form of Radha and Krishna. Radha and Krishna, their form, of course, is coming from Vrindavan. 
In Vrindavan, Lord Krishna appears in the form as Shamsundar, two-armed form. There is Vasudev Krishna and there is Shamsundar Krishna. Vasudev Krishna is four-armed form of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna in Dwarka, for example, or in Kurukshetra, this is Vasudev Krishna. But Lord Krishna in Vrindavan, this is Shamsundar Krishna. Krishna as a cowherd boy playing the flute. And he's performing his pastimes also in Vrindavan, the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Lord Krishna comes in different forms. On the altar you have also Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman. Lord Rama is Maryada Avatar. He is the incarnation of the Lord to present perfect etiquette, the perfect behavior. Lord Rama was spotless in his character. He did everything perfectly. He was very obedient to his father. When his father told him he should become king, he agreed. But then the next day his father told him, go to the forest for 14 years. He immediately took the order to her. And when his wife departed from the world, he did not accept another wife. He took the vow, ekapat nevra. So he was very spotless in his character and he was a very expert ruler and he was concerned for the welfare of all of the citizens, everyone. He wanted everyone to be cared for. That is the nature of Lord Ramachandra. Lord Krishna is showing us the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But Lord Rama is showing us the pastimes of the perfect king, the perfect ruler. So different times in different places the Lord comes and performs different purposes for the pleasure of his devotees. As Lord Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita that he comes to give pleasure to his devotees and to annihilate the miscreants. Lord Rama came with a bow and he, when he went to the forest he killed many rakshasas. Even Surpanaka came and she tried to, she tried to seduce the Lord and the Lord cut off her ears and nose and sent her away. And of course she went to her brother Ravan and told him. So Lord Ramachandra, who would do these things? And Lord Krishna also delivered many demons. He killed many demons with his Surasan Chakra. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes in the Kali Yuga and he simply preaches the message of Krishna consciousness. He encourages everyone to chant the holy name of Lord Krishna. Even when there, were, when there were drunkards and debauchees who came and attacked Lord Nityananda, at first Lord Chaitanya was ready to kill them, but he was, he was implored by Lord Nityananda that in this age, in this Kali Yuga, you must be merciful. And Lord Chaitanya spared the lives of these two debauchees. And instead they became great devotees. Although they had been fallen souls and performed many sins, they became great devotees by the mercy of the Lord. So in the Kali Yuga, the Lord comes, but he does not kill the demons. Rather, he changes the demons and makes them into devotees. 
That is the potency of the Lord. The Lord has that power. For him there is no difference between demon and devotee. He sees everyone as his parts and parcels. And he can change the demon into a devotee. And if he wants, he can send the devotee into the world to become a demon. Just like he did when Jai and Vijay, the two gatekeepers at the door of Vaikuntha, they stopped the four Kumaras from entering. And so at that time the four Kumaras were very angry. And the Lord came to see what was going on. And the Lord came as Padmanabha and he saw them, the four Kumaras, had been stopped from entering to Vaikuntha. And they were angry and they accused the two, gate, the two gatekeepers, Jai and Vijay, that you don't belong here. You are seeing distinction here. You are thinking we are not qualified to enter. So I think you two must be imposters. You should go to the material world. And at that time Lord Padmanabha came and he approved the curse of the four Kumaras. The four Kumaras are sons of Lord Brahma. They're simply personalities. So Lord Padmanabha agreed that you are being cursed in this way, you should go. Actually, it's a divine plan because the Lord wanted these two go doorkeepers to go into the material world and become demons. Although they were his devotees, you go and become demons. And in this way, you only take birth three times. But if you go as devotees, you have to take birth seven times. So they say, all right, let us be demons for three births. So they went as demons. And then this way, the Lord was very happy because the Lord desired some fight. He likes to fight. And when he fights, he has to fight with people who are really good demons. So he arranged not just anybody can be a demon. He sent these two doorkeepers and they became demons. First of all, they became Haranyakashipu and Haranyaksha. Haranyakashipu was killed by Lord Nasringadev and Haranyaksha was killed by Lord Varaha. And then they took birth again and they became Ram and Kumbhakarn. And as Ravan and Kumbhakarn, the Lord comes as Lord Ramachandra and he kills them. And they took birth again. The third birth, they became Sishupala and Dantavakra. Sishupala and Dantavakra. And they were immensely wealthy because they'd been killed by the Lord. Sishupala was almost equal to Lord Krishna. He was a competitor of Krishna. He was going to marry Rukmini, who was supposed to be the wife, Lord Krishna's consort. You could imagine how opulent he must have been, that he was competing with Krishna. So Lord Krishna killed Sishupala and then he killed also Dantavakra. And in this way, the, these two went back to the spiritual world to become Jai and Vijay, the doorkeepers to Vaikuntha. So the Lord arranges like that for his devotees that they go into the material world sometime because he enjoys fighting with them. He likes a good, sometimes a king will keep men with him to fight, to practice fighting with. So Lord Krishna he also needs people to fight. So, like this. This is the pastimes of the Lord. He, he is the supreme enjoyer. Just like all of us, we like to enjoy. We enjoy in our tiny little ways. And the Lord 
Lord Krishna, he enjoys supremely all different manners the Lord is enjoying. We are trying to imitate him. We are trying to enjoy independently. But we can enjoy when we connect to him. And the way to connect is by bhakti yoga, by doing yoga of devotion, particularly by chanting the holy name and studying books like Bhagavad Gita and other books. We have so many books, but especially Bhagavad Gita, very important. We need to hear the Bhagavad Gita and we need to chant his holy name. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare, Hare. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Rama, Rama. Rama, Rama. Hare, Hare Hare. Any question? Anyone? Yeah. Yes, Prabhu. Um, we, we understand that Krishna is the friend Suhurtam Sarvam Bhutanam. He's in our heart. We understand that Krishna is the well wisher in our heart as Paramatma. Um, how can we learn to listen to what he has to say to better? How can we differentiate when Paramatma speaks and when our own mind speaks? Well, we have to understand what is being said, first of all. What is being said? You have to consider, is it a desire for your own sense gratification or is it something for a higher purpose? When Krishna speaks, he's not just speaking something for our own sense gratification. The nature of the mind is to speak for our sense gratification for our own material pleasures. But when the Lord speaks, He's directing us for a higher purpose, to understand our real purpose, our real mission in life. The Lord is directing us according to the words of Shastra. So we have to also consider the words of Sadhu, Shastra and Guru and how much what is coming from the, the mind, is it in accord with Sadhu, Shastra and Guru? Are the, the speaking of the Lord from the heart as the Super Soul, is that in accord with Sadhu, Shastra and Guru? You have to recognize these things. So we have to know what is in the scriptures. And then we can understand, is it the mind or is it the Super Soul? Is it Krishna speaking to us? Just like one person said, Oh, Krishna told me I should write a new Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is too old. He wants me to write a new Bhagavad Gita. And so this is nonsense. This is not according to Shastra or Sadhu or Guru. No Guru or Sadhu would speak like this. So this is coming from the mind. Somebody said, we can eat fish. Fish is the fruit of the sea. That is another thing coming from the mind. The thinking coming from the mind. It's not the words of the Shastra. Fighting. 
Yeah, well, Krishna fighting is of a different nature to people fighting here in the material world. As you say, people are fighting here for their own greed, for their own lust, because they desire to conquer and exploit. They want to be the proprietor. But Lord Krishna is fighting for his own pleasure. He wants the enjoyment. He enjoys it. It's a recreation for him. So it's on a very different level. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Uh, on behalf of Klein Yatra, I'd like to thank uh, Maharaj for wonderful Krishna Gada and Sloka. So it's so nice to hear on this, all these Slokas and Krishna Gada in this Agada city. So thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. So, we are blessed to have the Maharaj on this Yagata uh, city. So, uh, on, on, uh, on the other side, I'd like to thank all the Prabhupis and Madhavi for coming today. Although it's Saturday area, it's raining and all that, still, uh, yes, uh, all of them managed to come up. Thank you very much. And, uh, so I will attend to uh, uh, Yagata city prasad of today. Yagata city prasad of today. To that. Before that, uh, Maharaj is doing a lot of preaching. So Maharaj is preaching in Thailand, China, and Malaysia. Right? So, if you'd like to help Maharaj preaching activities, you can donate some uh, Dashmi. Uh, in short while, you can take Dashmi from Maharaj. You can donate whatever you can. Okay? Thank you very much. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Yesterday during the Radhyatra, this Prabhu will be 
introduce his people, so he's coming all the way from here. Oh, maybe you can just let him start off this uh, new year, the last year conversation. Yeah. Just let him introduce him. Yeah. What's your, what's your name? Dinesh. 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 Oh. Thank you. 
English? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? So you take shelter today. Shelter is the beginning and then after six months we'll see how you do. Maybe you can get initiation after six months. Mother and father to both the People call you? Full name? Bumi. Nila. Bumi Nila. What do your friends call you? Nila. Nila. Bye. Bye. 
Santi Mataji. Santi Mataji. I didn't see her at KL. I did. We have a KL. I did. I was at KL. I did not see her. Oh, wasn't it? 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 W